Pasuk says, Vayigdilu anarim, when the children grew up, we mean Yaakov and Esav. So then Esav became an Ish Yadeh Tzayid, he became a hunter. And Yaakov Ishtam Yeshvalim, Yaakov was the simple one who sits and, 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 and studies in the, in the tents of the Torah, like Chazal say, in the Beis Medrash. He became a holy Jew, he sat and learned the whole day. And Esav went out to hunt, and we know it means hunting, it means he went out and he, and he violated s- severe Averis on that very day that he became a Godel. And uh, he went off and he became what we know as Esav Arasha, our biggest opponent, our biggest foe, and our, and our, and our most hated enemy throughout the history. And uh, Rashi says that when they were little, it wasn't apparent, we weren't able to tell. Yaakov, Esav, they looked the same, they sat together, they were cute little children. When they became big, they became 13, they became already mature. So then it was possible to see the differences between Yaakov and Esav, how starkly different they were. Yaakov the Tzaddik and Esav the Rasha. Rav Hirsch says that there's something much more deep going on in these psukim and in this explanation of Chazal. And in fact, what Rav Hirsch says, if it wouldn't be for Rav Hirsch, it would be difficult for us to say such a thing. But Rav Hirsch says, it's not all, the Torah is not only telling us a story, the Torah is explaining to us who is at fault over here and how we can avoid a similar outcome in the future. If we look at the Medrash, says Rav Hirsch in the, in the Yaakov Shemoyni, the Medrash says that Yaakov and Esav as children, they were similar to a hadas and, and, uh, and, and a thorn bush. A thorn bush and a hadas bush. Hadas bush is very pleasant. It gives off a pleasant smell. Thorn bush is, 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 it doesn't do anything, not, doesn't do anything constructive to anybody. It's just a, destruct, a destructive plant. When it's very, very small, it's difficult to see that one's a hadas and one is a, one is a thorn bush. When, but when it grows up, you can see the myrtle bush. You can see it. It's completely different than the, than the, than the, uh, than the thorns. So too, continues the Medrash. Yaakov and Esav went to base Hasefer. They went to the school. When they became 13, Yaakov remained, and Esav went across the street to the Beit Sefer of Avoid Zara. So here too, when they were small, you couldn't see it when they became big. Says Rav Hirsch, you know what the problem was? The problem was that they both went to the same Beit Sefer. They didn't have to go to the same Beit Sefer. That was his mistake. Rivka, when she was expecting Yaakov and Esav, she went for advice. Why, is, why do I feel this pull by the shuls, by the Beit Sefer, Beit Sefer Medrash, and I feel the same pull by the Avodah Zara? What did, the, what, did the, what, did, what did she get her answer from Hashem, from the Novi? That you have two different children. One is this type of child, one is a different type of child. You have to be careful. Don't treat them the same way. But Rivka did not ignore the advice. She sent them to the same school, says Rav Hirsch. They did not have to go to the same school. They did not have to have the same approach to education and to child rearing. Esav and Yaakov, they should have had two different schools. Yaakov was supposed to go to the yeshiva, and Esav should have gone to a trade school where he, where he could realize his talents as a, as a hunter as some, and still appreciate the, the chinuch of Yitzchak. By sitting in the same school as Yaakov for 13 years, he became frustrated, he became angry, and when he left, he left with anger. He slammed the door behind him, he said, I don't want anything to do with this. For 13 years, I wasted my life. I don't appreciate this Torah, this Mishnah, the Gemara. I don't appreciate that. Says Rav Hirsch, obviously very harsh words. Says Rivka was, was partially here uh, guilty for the fact she also takes blame. She's also responsible for the outcome of Yaakov and Esau. This is a lesson to parents. Obviously, we don't have the opportunity to take each child and send them to a different school. But our approach to Chinuch, our approach to each child has to be to find what is in each child. Not every child is made the same. Not every child has the same has the same wants, has the same desires, has the same dreams. And even as a small child, it's already possible. If we look carefully, we can even see, even as it's starting to go, we can see, well, here's a, here's a thorn bush. This is a dangerous one. We have to give him extra, extra, extra attention. We have to develop his talents in a way that he won't turn his back on the chinuch. But at the same time, we have to realize that he is not cut out for the same chinuch that Yaakov is cut out for. Good job.